everyone, I'm Dana Perino, along with Judge Janine Pirro, Harold Ford Jr., Jesse Waters, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. So the Democrats' assistant coach fumbling the ball at the big VP debate, Senator J.D. Vance and Governor Tim Walz, striking a more civil tone as they tangled over the big issues facing the country. And it turns out shielding your candidate from media scrutiny is just not the best strategy. Tim Walls only doing a half dozen interviews before the showdown, and it left him a little bit rusty when compared to the battle-tested Vance. Watch. A nearly 80-year-old Donald Trump talking about crowd sizes is not what we need in this moment. Governor Waltz just accused Donald Trump of being an agent of chaos. Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. People were afraid of stepping out of line. When we start to see that type of fickleness around holding the coalitions together, Donald Trump's fickle leadership. Donald Trump is fickle. If you blame Donald Trump, who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. That's, that's the test. That's the Supreme Court test. Tim, fire in a crowded theater. You guys wanted to kick people off of Facebook for saying that toddlers shouldn't Senator, wear a mask. Governor Walls has faced credibility issues from stolen valor claims to embellishing his military record. And last night, he stumbled over whether he was in Hong Kong during the Tiananmen Square protest, despite many outlets reporting that he wasn't. Can you explain that discrepancy? My community knows who I am. They saw where I was at. They, look, I, I will be the first to tell you, I have poured my heart into my community. I've tried to do the best I can, but I've not been perfect. And I'm a knucklehead at times. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So I was in Hong Kong and China during the democracy protest. Governor Walls had an entire night to sleep on those comments. His cleanup job wasn't that great. Look, I have my dates wrong. I, I was in Hong Kong and China in 1989. Um, that, that move from Hong Kong into China, it was profound for me. That was the summer of democracy. I said it's where I understood how sacred democracy was. All right, Greg Gutfeld, haven't heard from you yet and looking forward to it. He was unprepared, but why is that his fault? Democrats don't have to be prepared. Mm. They're usually operating under the assumption that it's going to be an easier ride for them than if you were a Republican. And he's like, what's up? What's with all this stuff? The media tried to lower expectations for Waltz, and they were right to do that now that we see how he did. But they overplayed Vance's unlikability. So you were mm -hmm. expecting something that wasn't charming, smart, or steady. So the media actually helped Vance by amplifying his unlikability. The first time you saw Vance was last night after a steady diet of media caricatures. What a shock it must have been. Wow, he's not weird. He's not mean. I mean, this guy came out and just shows you how the media lies to you. The media portrays those outside their bubble falsely. And then when you finally see the reality, then your, your eyes are open to the things they say. Vance also did something good. Uh, he knew this wasn't a political talk show where you try to score points uh, by making statements loudly that will end up being retweeted. He, was, he wasn't going for the dopamine. He was going for the depth. And that was his mission. And his mission showed a contrast between steady and unsteady. He showed that a silencer is just as deadly as a shotgun. I think what is really cowardly, though, is the mistake Democrats made by not choosing Shapiro. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they might lose Pennsylvania. They definitely lost that debate because they wanted a guy who wasn't a Jew. You know, and now you've got a non-Jew who's frantic, nervous, chaotic, liar. I think this was a real slap in the face of the Harris campaign. No offense to her husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Judge, I want to get to you after you watch this. This is the liberal media who was forced to praise J.D. Vance. Call for number four. Walls did seem unsteady. And frankly, what I saw in Walls is somebody who has not faced questions on a national stage 
since he became the Democratic nominee. In contrast, J.D. Vance was very smooth. I was getting texts from Democrats panicked, quite frankly, who were saying, wow, he's really moderating himself on a lot of these issues. He's the most likable he has ever been. He seemed at many moments to be reasonable. Walls did not seem prepared for it. I mean, a lot about this debate tonight was, was weird. There were uncomfortable, cringy moments. There were so many niceties on that debate stage tonight. I am just kind of like, well, if you agree so much with J.D. Vance, why should they vote for you? All right, Judge, take it away. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, it's clear that even they understood that J.D. Vance was solid, he was friendly, he was polite, he was disciplined, and he was the kind of guy that for the first time, and by the way, 88% of the American people said that this was a debate that was civil and that they enjoyed. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. And that's because of J.D. Vance. When they tried to cut him off, and we'll talk about that later, or when Walt lied, he was polite. This is a guy who's going to reach across the aisle. This is a guy who will make not only a great vice president, but a great president one day. And I don't want to get into a lot of the small stuff, but I got to tell you, I was exhausted watching Walls. I mean, it was like this, that, eyes bunched out, turn around, right, right down. It was almost like he was waiting for the feds to come in and arrest him or something. I was like exhausted. But J.D. Vance, he so impressed me. And I think he impressed everybody. This is a guy who's going to try to solve problems. He didn't fight. He didn't, he didn't play dirty. I just want to say one more thing about Waltz. You know, being a knucklehead doesn't excuse you from being a serial liar. Did you wear a tie like this for a special occasion? Uh, a post-debate tie? Is this a special occasion tie? I mean, it feels, it feels like happy. happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unlike you is what we're saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> See, that's a happy one. You know, this tie reflects the mood of the country. We are pleasantly surprised. Mm. How many times could you say that after watching these <laughs> debates? Because <laughs> there was the J.D. Vance hoax that was destroyed last <laughs> night. We were told that this guy was a sketch ball. And then many Americans, especially women, saw J.D. Vance last night, and they thought, this seems like the kind of guy you can bring home to your parents. <laughs> he's smooth. He's polished. He's reasonable. He's civil. He's smart. He's humble. Everything that they said about him was completely the opposite. So he had a great night, but Trump even had a better night mm -hmm. because Trump chose him. And remember the first Trump term, didn't pick the best people? A lot of people are now reassured that Trump is picking the right people this time. And in a race that this is this tight, you know how they say Trump has like 94% of Republicans? Mm -hmm. Those 6% of Republicans, you call them Nikki Haley people, never Trumpers, Chris mm -hmm. Christie, Rod, they loved J.D. Vance last night. I had so many texts from people like that saying, wow, J.D. Vance was amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of presentation that they long for, that Trump doesn't bring to the table, but that can bring independents, women with college degrees, and moderate Republicans back. So he added to the ticket and created momentum after the Democrats have had a real bad last four or five days. Walls seemed nice, but didn't have a story to tell. Just seemed discombobulated, and the media hated him because he wasn't nasty enough. Their whole goal is to make Trump the devil. And you can't agree with the devil. And a lot of the times they were nodding along and it was like watching two Midwestern working class types of guys agree that the working class is kind of getting hosed by corporate America and by the powers that be. And that was really nice to see. That scared the hell out of the left because they don't want to see agreement. They want to see blood. So he made two huge mistakes. Everybody knows what they are. I'm friends with the school shooter. And was I in Hong Kong? I have no idea. Vance, 20 years younger than him. Does everybody know in the audience that Greg and Walls are the same age? <laughs> look how good he looks. Now put Walls on the screen. Now, you look at J.D. Vance, they say Kamala's the next generation. I look at J.D., he's the new generation. Yep. Yep. So a lot of people that know that Trump's termed out after four are going to look at this guy who can convey the American first message with an agreeable tone they say this is a guy for the future. You're telling me Waltz is only 48? <laughs> you look so good, Greg. Thanks. Okay.
Thumbling the ball. Thumbling the ball. Scrutinize. Scrutinize. Showdown. Showdown. Deterrence. Deterrence. Fickleness. Fickleness. Coalitions. Coalitions. Embellishing. Embellishing. Sleep on. Sleep on. Under the assumption. Under the assumption. Cringy. Cringy. Niceties. Niceties. Sketchball. Sketchball. Discombobulated. Discombobulated. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thank you for watching.